guys what's up welcome back to my channel my name is Lucy and if you are new here I would love for you to stick around and subscribe I do a ton of other like lifestyle vlogs and videos like that so if you are into that definitely stick around my channel I would love to have you here and yeah but today I decided I would do a sit down video because I honestly love doing sit down videos but I just never dedicate the time to doing them so i was like i'm gonna do a sit down video today i've wrote out a ton of ideas of videos that i want to film for you guys and this is the first one i wanted to film because i feel like i get the most questions about this which is how we budget as a young married couple if you are new here my husband and i got married literally two years ago next monday so our anniversary is 7 11 and um yeah we I've been married for almost two years, which is crazy. I feel like once you've been married for two years, you learn so much about each other. You've been living together for two years. You've been balancing like all aspects of life together for two years. So I feel like it's somewhat of a good mark of, okay, we've made it two years doing what we've been doing and it's been working. So why not share it? I have my coffee. And I wrote down a ton of like, tips things that we do point of discussion yada yada all kinds of stuff that you can benefit from i think when it comes to budgeting finances all that as a young married couple and even if you aren't married yet you're engaged you're about to head into marriage and you're trying to prepare yourself for the like financial aspect of marriage i think that a lot of these things can be helpful to you i also really wanted to leave my hair down for this video but i live in south carolina now and it is just way too freaking hot like even in our house it's just it's just so hot all the time in the summer so hair up it is um but i am gonna go ahead and get into all of these little tidbits i hope i can stay on topic with these because i feel like i'm gonna ramble a lot on these different points but hopefully they will benefit you also my dog bentley is literally sleeping in the background of this video so if you're wondering what that animal is on the floor it's my dog and i want to preface all this too by saying that zach and i are going to budget completely different than you budget than our parents budget than our friends budget everyone is going to budget differently because everyone has different incomes different payments they have to make every month everything's going to look different for everyone so this is not like hey, you need to do this to a T and you'll be successful financially. Um, we have definitely like hit some financial bumps in our marriage in the past two years. We've definitely had arguments over finances and that's just a reality of, you know, coming together with someone and being married and spending money like together towards things now. It's just different than it just like being your own money. And going along with that, I wanna say that Zach and I do have a joint bank account. Um, I know that's like not for everyone to each their own totally in that area. Um, I think for Zach and I, we just looked at it as we're getting married, we're becoming one. So our finances should become one. Um, but a lot of people don't look at it that way. Perfectly fine either way, whichever way works best for you. I say do it because that's the way you're going to have the least amount of financial tension and you're ultimately going to be more successful financially as a couple if you do what works best for you guys this is just for what works for us so i just want to preface this video by saying that's like our foundation of finances that is that we have a combined checking a combined savings and that's how we like keep our money so our money is always together um and we just view it as like what what's mine is his what's his is mine that kind of thing so first tip is and this you can do obviously like before even going into marriage is to create common goals so figure out what your financial goals are as a couple so do you want to buy a house within the next year or two are you planning to have kids within the next year or two do you want to make a big purchase like a new car for one of you in the next year or two whatever the goals may be make those goals literally sit down have a conversation together even write them down if that helps you out um and just make sure that you're on the same page with whatever your goals are if you have those bigger goals and bigger purchases that you're working towards you both know that okay we're setting aside this money because we know we're both aiming for the same goal of this 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 like whatever that may be and it doesn't even have to be like bigger purchases as your goals it could just be that you want to put x amount of money into your retirement fund every single month whatever like just think of what your goals are as a couple like i said for maybe bigger purchases down the road how much you want to save every month and make sure that you make these goals attainable because if you don't then you're just going to get frustrated and i think that that too can really drive a wedge in between you and your significant other so just make sure that you are making these goals attainable and if it means okay we need to make 
these smaller goals first before we like really strive for these bigger goals then do that um truly just sit down and have a conversation decide what you're kind of working towards financially as a couple and just make sure that you're on the same page about it so yeah that'd be my first tip is just make sure that you define what your goals are financially so this one i think has been really important for zach and i's relationship and i think it could be really important for most relationships again not everyone's gonna agree with me on this one but i personally think that there should be kind of like a sole person in the relationship that is in charge of financial things so what i mean by that for us it's zach so before we even got married i kind of deemed him as the person that i wanted to be like kind of fully in charge of our finances one because i'm a spender he's a saver and i knew that he would keep us on track financially if it were up to me we would probably be in like crazy debt because i just love to spend money but um he just really keeps us on track with our finances our budget like how much we're saving a month like He's just very, very aware of that and I'm not, nothing wrong with that. He actually just really like cares about it, which I care about it too, but not to the degree that he does. And so I knew if I put him in charge of all of our financial stuff, he's gonna have it taken care of. That's just what really works for us. And I know several other couples in our lives that do it that way as well. And it works really great for them. That being said, I do think you both need to be on the same page about finances still though. doesn't mean that oh this person is paying all the bills they're the only one like aware of the budget they're the only one that like cares about our finances you both need to care equally um but i just think there needs to be kind of one almost like an accountant in the relationship like okay they're really keeping track of like where your money's going like how you're spending your money where you can cut back that kind of thing and for Zach and I, like I said, he's the one that kind of created our budget. He's the one that runs all that. And so at the end of every month, we kind of have like a check-in with each other. We go over whatever we spent for that month. We look at where we can cut back for the month ahead. And it's just been really helpful to kind of have him be the facilitator on all of that. And like I said, he really, really loves to do it and like keep track of it. And I appreciate him so much for being on top of that because like I said, I would not know where to even start with making a budget but i've learned so much from him in the past two years and i've really like changed a lot of my mindset and stuff when it comes to money also it's getting so cloudy so sorry if the lighting's changing but yeah i've just really learned a lot about like saving money and the smart way to spend money through him so i really appreciate him for that so personally for us i think it's been so beneficial to have that one person that's really just like financially smart compared to the other person um but you know everything's different for everyone's marriage so if your relationship you both feel that you need to independently like do your own finances especially if you don't have a combined bank account you know do what works for you i'm seriously just sharing in this video what works for us going along with that when it comes to creating your budget i know i said that zach created our budget which he did like he created the system of our budget as far as like the excel spreadsheet and like how all of that works i don't even know how he like made i don't know how to use excel <laughs> so he like made it to where it like calculates a certain amount and i don't know the way he like set it up works really great for just like quickly inputting like our different stuff from our bank statement so as far as that goes he created that but when we created our budget we created it together i still vividly remember sitting down in our first apartment in our little office space and he created the spreadsheet while i was sitting next to him um and we talked through every area of our life that we felt okay we need to delegate this much money to this part and this much money to this part and we kind of broke things down he has like our spreadsheet all like color coordinated we kind of just used like what my income was what his income was as our base for like okay this is what we can expect to bring in every month and then we kind of went from there so we know we probably need to set aside four hundred dollars for groceries which in the beginning of our relationship we did use an envelope system which i'll get into that but um we knew we needed to set aside that much for that we knew we needed to set aside some spending money for ourselves like going out to eat together and on dates and like double dates with friends so we made like a spending budget section of our budget for us going out and doing fun things and we had a rent section and all that so we have everything kind of broken down into what we know we're going to spend every month and it was really neat to just like talk together and come to an agreement together on how much we felt we needed to delegate to the different areas and it wasn't like a one and done type of thing so after that first month we went back and looked over like what we spent that month and we were like okay we're spending way too much money in this area 
we need to cut back or well we kind of underestimated this area like maybe we need to add more to this area of our budget and it was just kind of like an ongoing discussion for a couple months until we really got things down and yeah so be prepared like i said to have ongoing discussions about your budget i don't want you to think like oh we're just gonna set this budget before we even get married and then we're just good to go no like it's a monthly discussion for zach and i still to this day um but especially in the beginning like actually figuring out okay this is how much we need to kind of dedicate to each section of our life so yeah that was like a long spiel about creating the budget together but yeah when you first create that initial budget make sure you do it together like i said even if you do have that financial leader in your marriage just make sure that when you are creating the budget it's not just them creating it because you want to like i said from the beginning always be on the same page and i've already kind of touched on this but make sure you're having kind of like weekly and monthly check-ins with each other zach will pull up our bank statement and be like what was this hundred dollars that you spent through venmo I'll be like oh i got my hair done and i venmo the girl so like he doesn't like I'll tell him, hey, I'm getting my hair done next week. And he's like, okay, so it's in one ear and out the other. So then the next week he's like, what is this $100 that you spent on Venmo? And I'm like, I Venmo my hair girl because I just got my hair done. Especially if it's just like a Venmo thing that is like a random $100. He's like, okay, what was this for? And I will say in the beginning, I really struggled with this because obviously he's in charge of like putting everything into our budget so i always felt like i had to be on the defense of him asking like okay why like what is this for what is this for like what is this for and i won't lie it definitely got to me at some points and we had to have a lot of like in-depth discussions that i'm simply asking you because i need to know for the budget not because i'm trying to interrogate you for what you're spending but that's just me being fully transparent i mean you're gonna have these financial arguments financial disagreements it's gonna happen finances can be one of the biggest problems in a marriage and you really really have to be in constant communication about it with each other and have a lot of trust with each other so yeah in the beginning i definitely was very defensive about like okay this is why i'm spending this because like i said in the beginning i'm the spender he's the saver and so i've got to grab a coffee and he'd be like why are you spending money on coffee every single day and hence why he bought me an espresso machine so that i can make coffee at home but no i still go get coffee like every day and it's fine now because we had a discussion about it and it was honestly just me needing to become more aware of what i was spending i just was not raised like that and i just had no financial awareness coming into our marriage so um like i said it's just been helpful to have him as a guidance through our marriage financially because i feel like i've improved so much with like how much money i spend when i spend it what i spend it on and i've just gotten a lot smarter um about spending money i fully credit zach for getting me to that point and us having these weekly monthly check-ins really really helped because he'd be like hey you're spending like 50 bucks on coffee every week and I'd be like, oh, really? He'd be like, yeah, you know, maybe maybe we should cut back on that a little bit. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. I just would blindly spend money, especially in the beginning of our marriage. And he's like, whoa, slow your roll, sweetie. We need to reevaluate. And like I said, it led to a lot of beneficial discussions for me because it made me way more aware of what I was spending and how much I was spending. And it helped us come to a good happy medium of like, he understands why I wanna go out and get coffee every now and then. And I understand why he doesn't want me to spend money on getting coffee every single day out when we have a nice little coffee machine at home and I can drink coffee at home. So yeah, that's just like a little example, but just be prepared to have a lot of financial discussions, especially in the beginning. So I would say this one goes along with being aware of like what you're spending and i think it's super smart to come up with an amount especially if you have a combined bank account um come with an amount that you need to kind of consult the other person before you spend it so let's say you're in sephora and you find this perfume that you are obsessed with but it's like 250 dollars instead of just getting it and then your husband's like why did you spend 250 dollars on a perfume <laughs> come up with an amount that you are fully comfortable with the person spending anything below that amount without like talking to you about it first um but anything above that amount you would prefer they like talk to you about it so you can kind of come to an agreement of whether or not it's a smart financial decision for you so if you come to an agreement that 250 dollars is your limit and the perfume you want to get is 256 dollars in that situation it would be best to call your significant other say hey i found this perfume that i really love i've been wanting it for a while it's 250 dollars. i wanted to talk to you about it before i purchased it because i want to make sure it was 
a smart financial decision for now. So then that way you both are on the same page. So you're not just like spending money on these things that you might not necessarily need. And then when it comes to things you actually need, you can't afford it. And then your significant other is like, okay, well, if you hadn't spent all this money on all these things, we wouldn't be in this situation right now. Because I feel like that happens to couples a lot. There's probably definitely someone in the relationship that spends more money than the other person. And then when it comes to like, okay, we need this amount of money now because we need to get your car repaired or we need to pay this medical bill or whatever these things that just kind of happen then the other person that's not spending all the money can almost like attack the other person for spending the money whereas if you come to an agreement that okay we're not going to spend more than this much on something before consulting the other person then you know that you guys made that decision together for you to make the purchase even if it is just a purchase for yourself you came to an agreement together for you to spend your combined money on something for yourself that's of that magnitude of price. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm not explaining it very well, but that's just what works for Zach and I. Before we make a bigger purchase, we always consult the other person on it. We just always wanna make sure that whatever we're doing is a smart decision for us as a whole financially. So yeah. And another way that I feel like you could go about this without having to like consult the other person is to make like separate spending checking accounts for each of you. So let's say Zach and I's monthly spending for each of us is $500. So I get $500 to spend on myself a month. He gets $500 to spend on himself a month. So that means that if I want to spend $250, half of my monthly spending allowance, on this perfume that I found, then I can do that and I don't have to talk to him about it because that's my money in my account that we have already talked about and agreed on to set aside for me to spend on myself every month. Does that make sense? Which that can I already kind of do that as well. We Everything comes out of one checking account just because that's what works best for us. But within our budget, we have different like allotted amounts for each of us to spend on ourselves every month. If I want to buy something for myself, I don't really have to like consult him on it as long as it's under that set amount that we've budgeted out for ourselves to spend on ourselves every month. Does that make sense? <laughs> I feel like I'm not explaining this stuff very well. I'm kind of bad at explaining financial things. I feel like Zach should have been in this video with me so he could explain things a little better. But that is just my two cents on like that aspect of things. I also want to touch a little bit on like credit and debt and all of that just because you want to be aware of what the other person is kind of like bringing into the marriage when it comes to like how much debt they might be in, student loan payments, things like that, just so you are fully aware of, okay, this is how much we're gonna be spending a month on these different bills, payments, debts, etc. Because especially if you are combining bank accounts, that's gonna be coming from your paycheck as well. So just making sure that you are aware of, hey, this is like how much of a, I don't want to call it like a financial burden, but how much debt I'm bringing into this relationship just so that you're not blindsided when you're like married a year down the road and you're like, oh, I have to start making my student loan payments and they're going to be like $500 a month. <laughs> so just making sure that you are aware and fully transparent with your significant other, especially in that engagement season when you're kind of like talking through getting prepared for marriage financially. And then just being on the same page as far as like, debt and stuff so Zach knows that I could not be trusted <laughs> with a credit card. If it were up to me I'd probably have five credit cards right now um, but we just have one credit card that we use just to build up good credit because we obviously need good credit to make bigger purchases like cars, houses, whatever down the line so we have one credit card that we use every month for like different things like we might use it one month for any of our like going out to eat purchases, we might use it another month on gas. Um, we just kind of decide based on like what the benefits are depending on your credit card company. I think that can be another point of discussion of, okay, are we gonna only spend money with our debit cards? Are we gonna get a credit card? Or how many credit cards do we wanna get? That sort of thing I think is also a benefit to discuss before you get into the marriage because you at least kind of know what direction you're heading in. Zach and I knew we did not wanna get a credit card within the first year of our marriage because we wanted to really get a good handle on our finances before we kind of like started going down that avenue. But we've had our current credit card, I think for like six months now, and I think we've been really smart with it. So I honestly feel like it's only gonna benefit us, especially because 
you need credit to <laughs> make these bigger purchases down the road so last thing i want to touch on is being strict with yourself in the beginning um so zach and i i feel like we're really really strict on our finances in the beginning one because we got married during covid i did not have a job he was at risk for losing his job not really but like everything was up in the air like we did not know what was going to happen so we felt like okay we really need to be tight with our money and like be smart with it and i honestly think it helped us a lot later on down the road because we were like saving so much money and like not crazy spending and all that we were able to really put ourselves in a comfortable financial situation like today so we like i said have been married almost two years and i feel like we are very very comfortable financially and a lot of that is through a lot of prayer and god just like blessing us so much within the past two years but i will say us being strict in the beginning i think really 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 did help us and save us for down the road it set us up for more success so um if you can be stricter with your finances in the beginning i think it will be so beneficial to you in the long run especially when you're first married like you're excited you want to go out and celebrate all the time you want to hang out with your friends you want to like do this you want to just like spend all this money you might have a new house you have to decorate an apartment you need to decorate and spending all this money on this stuff is great and it's such an exciting time and i'm not saying you shouldn't do it but i think just being a bit more strict on yourself in the beginning is super helpful and pays off so much down the road i feel like you'll have a lot more financial freedom and it'll just help you have a better money mindset so quick example of how i feel like zach and i were really like kind of stricter on our money in the beginning i touched on this earlier but we did do the envelope system for a little bit um it wasn't like anything where every single part of our life was like sectioned out into envelopes if that works for you do it i know it works for so many people i wish we could make it work because it seems like a really neat way to organize your finances but we mostly did this with like our groceries um, and like going out to eat money. So we would have an envelope of cash. Every single month we would take the cash out of the bank and put it in an envelope for our groceries every month. And it really, really helped because when you go to the grocery store, it's so easy to overspend because you're like, oh, this looks good, this looks good. Let me just throw all this in the cart. And then you go up to the counter and you have a $200 grocery bill and you're like, oh my gosh, like I was only expecting to spend $100. So it really helps you like going into the grocery store of like, okay so for us like we would set aside four hundred dollars every single month for groceries so that meant a hundred dollars a week is what we would spend on groceries and so i would go into the grocery store knowing okay i only have a hundred dollars to spend like i can't get the rebags of chips just because they look good so i might would just get one bag of chips you know like it kind of just makes you have more of a smart money saving mindset going into different situations. So it's just a good way to really help yourself be aware, especially in the beginning stages of your marriage. We personally don't do the envelope system anymore because I feel like we got a really good handle on like, where our money was going and how we were compartmentalizing it and all that, that we didn't feel like we needed to be as strict about, okay, we ha only have this amount of cash, like physical cash to spend. Um, but I do think it helped us in the beginning to actually see, physically see that cash like going um because when you're just typing your card all the time you're not as aware of it as you are like actually handing someone physical money um so that's just a good way to help yourself especially in the beginning so yeah that is just my financial spiel um what has worked for us over the past two years kind of like the things i've acquired over the past two years that i think really have set us up for financial success um so i hope that this was helpful for you guys like i said we get a lot of questions i feel like from younger couples that are either going into marriage or are married and like are struggling financially just about the ways that we go about managing our finances and i think it can be such a sensitive and touchy subject um to talk about but i think it is so important to discuss and be aware of as you can live a much more happy financially free lifestyle if you just put a couple of these things into practice especially in your marriage because being a young married couple finances can be really challenging to navigate being married at any age honestly finances can be difficult to navigate so just making sure that you're always communicating with your significant other and you are working towards those common financial goals i think is huge and will really set you up for success in your marriage financially and normally being happy financially as a married couple you can then be happier in a lot of other aspects of your life and you don't feel like you have this looming thing 
over your head all the time so yeah that is just my personal experience with finances and budgeting within our first two years of marriage like i said we are a younger married couple i'm 24 zach's 28 and i'm so happy that we got married young i love doing life with him i truly cannot see it any other way um and i'm just so thankful that we have gotten a really really good grip on our finances so far in our marriage not to say that there isn't going to be financial hardships down the road and things that you don't expect and whatever but it's just nice to kind of have a good mindset with money and being on the same page with their significant other is super super key to having a happy happy marriage so that is all i hope that you guys enjoyed this video i hope you benefited from it in some way or another but if you enjoyed it definitely subscribe i would love to do more sit down videos so let me know what you want to see and yeah that is gonna be it i'm gonna finish my coffee and i will see you guys in my next video